back to to Rodrigo, Rodrigo Guerra. Um, he is, uh, I think, a very um, special kind of researcher. He um, actually makes robots. Uh, is that right, uh, Rodrigo? Yes, he works in a, in a Yeah, yeah, I'll show you in a minute, yeah. But um, what he will show us here is something with a more a broader view on this um, on this issue. He he has some um, unusual concerns about robotics. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Rodrigo da Silva Guerra. I am not a researcher in uh, this field of labor and uh, employment and things like that, but I, I, since I was invited to come here to breakfast, I, I proposed I talk about this because this is an issue that I, I'd like to think about a little bit. And uh, because of the title of the session, I thought it would fit quite well. And uh, I should disclaim I'm an enthusiast of robotics. I build robots. I, I, do, I do not think we are uh, moving away from that. Um, but I do think um, we, we need to think whether or not robots will take jobs. And um, t talking, uh, many, many of you have a background in control engineer, uh, in engineering. So um, one uh, analogy I can make is like this. Uh, if you have an open loop system, then you, don't, you cannot make sure where you are aimed. And we are getting somewhere. So maybe it's good to think about this at least um, if there's a small chance or a big chance or whatever, uh, what, what will happen next? Uh, maybe you should be uh, aware of uh, what are the, the signals and, and what is, uh, what's the proper action to uh, correct that in the proper direction. Yeah. So this talk will be about this. Uh, at first, I'll show a little bit of uh, the stuff I did before. Um, these are just short videos. I, I did my PhD with these um, micro robots. Uh, uh, in a mixed reality scenario, we had this uh, display in the horizontal position, and then we mapped this and then uh, did some um, um, games and uh, educational uh, things uh, using mixed reality. And uh, later, let me just show this. So here you see it kicking a simulated ball, that this green thing. Okay. And um, later on, I did some research with um, uh, insects, with, with a biologist, with the same small robot. So in, in, in here, we have some EMG uh, reading of the insect uh, while behaving. And, and then we use the robot to be able to repeat the experiments and so on. And this is the first time I, start, uh, I started ask, asking questions myself. I mean, I'm, I became vegetarian after this. so. <laughs> Anyway, and um, uh, back in Brazil, uh, that was in Japan, yeah, by the way. I did my PhD in Japan. And back in Brazil, I started uh, looking at other uh, interesting subjects. I, I was never really interested in manufacturing, I should say. So I was disappointed during my undergrad in Brazil because in Brazil, I think India, many um, developing countries, they, they focus engineering on... Uh, industry applications, but um, uh, in some other places, I think in Germany, uh, in Japan, you can have um, a, a focus on more scientific subjects and other uh, subjects that go away from the industry. And here I was uh, trying to do some um, prototypical, um, uh, a kind of uh, application for an exoskeleton of sorts, so I was doing this elastic uh, element, a kind of spring, and the idea is to you know, have the person moving the arm and then uh, maybe I get the intention of the movement and uh, the arm would then uh, help uh, fix that. So if you think of someone with a Parkinson or, or um, a difficulty uh, uh, holding a, a steady uh, movement. In industry, there is this, um, I had a colleague in Rio Grande in the south, very south of Brazil uh, that she did robots for welding uh, ships and for a while you have to keep a constant uh, distance from the the, the ship um, structure and then move uh, and uh, to help in the this kind of um, application yeah and um, 
I did some work also in the in the um, with te telepresence robots. Uh, we have a, a, a hospital in the um, uh, in our university, and the, this hospital is have reference for um, uh, treating uh, children with cancer. And sometimes in the treatment they have to be isolated because they have um, fragile Im immune system. And then I was trying to use the telepresence robot so that the, the isol isol to break a little bit the isolation and help uh, these children maybe uh, see the family and so on. Um, more recently now, uh, what I'm doing is uh, uh, humanoid robots. Uh, this is um, the latest one. I call, uh, I call it Dimitri, or he, should I say. <laughs> it's uh, 1.3 meter uh, high. And uh, it has these elastic joints all over, I mean, the, the knees, the, the arms, everything, yeah? And um, here is some uh, demonstration. I also like to uh, maybe harm a little bit the robots. <laughs> it's kind of uh, um, something, some trend, it seems. So I, here I throw a brick to show how it's uh, very uh, robust because of the spring. If you know, I mean, some of you maybe know these motors. These are dynamic cell motors. They are very fragile, usually you, they would not withstand that. And uh, in Brazil, they cost like 4,000 reais, so it's uh, a lot of money. Uh, so I was brave to do that. <laughs> Little funny, so anyway. I want to talk now uh, to you about uh, something uh, different. Um, maybe some of you know this kind of graph. Uh, one famous one uh, is the Moore's Law, we say, yeah, the Moore's uh, graph uh, of exponential growth of uh, um, miniaturization of the amount of transistors you can put or computation you can do in a dice, let's say. And um, more recently, uh, Ray Kurzweil, uh, the, this guy, um, came with the law of accelerated returns and he extrapolated this uh, to basically all technology. Uh, he has, his idea is very simple, is that um, some technology helps you build newer technology, which helps you build even your technology. And somehow this is not, uh, this is not linear, this is exponential, because um, th then you're accumulating more and more power to build even better, better things, yeah? And um, talking about exponential growth, uh, one, thing I, uh, one graph I always like to show is this. I think this is very true. I, I do feel it myself, is um, if you see the exponential growth like this, <laughs> In the linear one, yeah, we are, we tend we as humans we are more uh, keen to see things in a linear way. So um, it, when we are um, in front of some something exponential, um, maybe at first we are disappointed because we, we are looking this direction, yeah, and then we we see this this is below the expectation, but then very quickly. Oh, thank you. Maybe I move too much. Ah, okay, this is better. So. Maybe we are here, and uh, and uh, as humans, we, we expect to be here, but we are disappointed a little bit. Maybe robotics is a little bit li like this right now. But uh, very quickly, the exponential growth takes over, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, you are very impressed with uh, the developments. Um, just to make you reassure, uh, we have some time ahead of us. Uh, we, we are not... Uh, uh, we are not here yet. I'll show some video now. This is uh, the state-of-the-art robotics. Um, some videos for, from the DRC challenge. This was, uh, this was a very interesting challenge uh, funded by the Department of Defense in the US after the Fukushima disaster. So uh, they wanted to fund, uh, to give a prize for robots that could um, ra rapidly uh, help in disaster scenarios, yeah? And actually, this is, I mean, a very no noble, <laughs> despite being a very, very funny video, <laughs> a noble um, uh, endeavor because um, if you think about Fukushima, the thing is, well, after the earthquake, the tsunami, then there was this uh, um, possible nuclear disaster, and they need to close some valves, yeah? something very simple, just go there and close a valve, and they could not send a robot to do that. And imagine Japan, where they have this image of robots as friends and uh, like heroes, like the Honda Asimo, the little astronaut robot or something like that. And uh, in the end, they, they, they had um, older people, people that have already advanced age, uh, exposing themselves to radiation to go there and close the valve. So this is something very um, tangible, yeah? So 
<coughs> if you plot in a log scale, um, this is something cultural, and th this guy's from uh, uh, f wh what you may call futurism or, or something like that. Uh, they 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 tend to bring all together yeah, the main, like, I mean, this is very subjective. Uh, it's very difficult to, to tell what to pick here or what not to pick, but uh, uh, they plot in this log scale all the major uh, things that happen in the evolution of life, let's say, on Earth, uh, and the, our technology in the end, yeah? Um, if you put this in the linear scale, then it becomes very evident that, uh, I mean, this, let me explain a little bit. The distance here is between one event to the other, yeah? And this log scale, so, one major event to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. If you see in the linear scale, then it's happening, um, it's happening faster and faster. So uh, there is some, you can, could imagine there's some asymptote, uh, 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 there's some singularity here somewhere, and they talk about this, or, or what will happen, nobody knows, but maybe there will be some um, major event or whatever. Um, very speculative. It used to be a, a kind of uh, funny way, speculative, but now people are taking this more and more seriously. Um, serious researchers are looking to this. Um, more recently than uh, this was mentioned before, um, this, um, in 2013, this study from Oxford University, is very interesting, you can find it, it online, legally. <laughs> and. Um, uh, they talk about, uh, they, they do, uh, uh, they are economists and they, they did a very uh, deep stu study about uh, the possibility of job uh, losses uh, due to automation, yeah? They don't go into much detail about the creation of new uh, positions, of course this is um, uh, uh, one possibility, but um, they do talk about the, the positions that exist now and might be extinct in 20 years, and they estimate around 35%. Um, more recently, uh, this Boston Consulting Group um, uh, said up to a quarter of the jobs will be replaced uh, either by software robots or robots by 2025. And this uh, researcher from Rice University estimates by 2045, that most human jobs will be able to be automated and unemployment will be around 50%. He's very pessimistic, yeah? Anyway, there are many others. You can look, uh, you can look it up. I, I put some references um, in the last slide. Also, you can look in the, oh, maybe you cannot see, but uh, th th there was a number here for questions later. This is the 14, yeah. Okay. Like it was mentioned before, uh, it happened before. I mean, we had. Um, disruptive developments in the, indus in the in industry in the past, and people are really scared. I was reading um, the Queen Elizabeth I. She refused to grant a patent to a knitting machine because she was afraid to take the jobs of the the people that knit. Uh, and uh, well, this was like uh, uh, many years ago. So, uh, um, so why why this is this time is different, yeah. And there are many reasons people, some people believe uh, this time is for real. Like one one ane anecdote uh, I heard was that um, uh, you could uh, uh, heat and uh, put more and more heat into water and imagine it to it would get ho just hotter and hotter. But at some point it boils, yeah. And this was uh, uh, this idea of the, a tipping point or some something like that, yeah. Um, and some arguments are that uh, these disruptive technologies now are very general purpose. For the first time, they can be applied in many fields, uh, vast, uh, uh, different uh, areas. Um, it's much faster and uh, accelerating. Um, now, blue and white collar jobs, uh, sorry, f uh, the white is missing, uh, are, are at risk. And also, on top of that, uh, we have a population that's getting older, yeah? Just to have a, the other side also, uh, some people are more optimistic. Um, so uh, if we are now free, so we, uh, let's say humans um, uh, that lost their jobs, they, they have free time, so maybe there will, there will be a working force in other available jobs and new things will appear uh, naturally, yeah, somehow. So, uh, this is one example from the, the 
industrial revolution, yeah. Uh, how uh, we had lots of jobs in agriculture, and then it's not even uh, showing here. This is in the U.S., yeah. Uh, and this one idea. So even actually, we have now more jobs than we had before. There was some disruption; many jobs were lost, but then uh, a recover later. And uh, well, some people do think uh, it would, could happen again, yeah. Maybe some of my colleagues uh, think like that. Um, uh, yesterday, when I was Going over my presentation, um, it was mentioned about the uh, population growth. This is another good point uh, because uh, this creates demand. Yeah, it's not good to have more people. <laughs> I think many bad things about the world is because we have too many people. <laughs> but uh, in terms of, uh, if you look into automation, maybe there is demand for more jobs, more people uh, working. Even maybe automation not, it will not be able to take care of everything. But it's it is slowing down. Yeah. Most of, mo you cannot see here in the graph, but most of the growth in the in the last uh, here's like 2050. Yeah, it's uh, from here on is like speculative. It's going on in African countries and things like that. And the green green zone is Europe, uh, maybe U.S., uh, Japan, and these are shrinking a little bit now. Okay. Um, if you read about this, also there is this guy, Andrew McAfee, and he's famous for pointing out about this decoupling of productivity and labor. It's very interesting to me. He shows how, uh, it depends what graph you, you see, but here I think it's uh, um, fixed uh, for um, inflation maybe. Sometimes a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, but uh, uh, between 75 and 85 there was a disruption in, in in wages and productivity, where productivity um, kept going up very fast and, and wage didn't follow anymore. Yeah? And this, he talks about this as evidence for uh, um, some down pressure on uh, creating of job positions and uh, down pressure on the wages for the existing job positions. So this um, view. Um, anyway. Um, also, uh, just to um, help a little bit think about these subjects for the people that uh, didn't read much, much about this, one thing I want to mention is that uh, it's not like there'll, there'll be a humanoid robot with uh, legs and arms that will say, okay, you go away and then I sit here and I do your job. It's more likely that there are some tasks that are automated and then they increase the productivity of the existing job so that you don't have to have as many people to do the same amount of work. Uh, this is most likely. Uh, some rare cases are really replacing like uh, autonomous cars. Yeah, You don't have the driver there anymore, maybe in the future. Yeah, Very soon, maybe. Um, also, uh, it's not necessarily what you think as a manual work that will be replaced. Yeah, Sometimes very surprising. Um, we have, uh, and again, is this about tasks? I'm not saying there will be a, a, a like a robot doctor or a robot surgeon that will do all the job by itself. But uh, this is automating so much the tasks that, that uh, you don't need uh, as many people to do the same amount of work. Like lawyers, much of uh, work of uh, lo that lawyers do is going through paperwork, search, researching, uh, finding. Uh, 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 information documents and this can be automated very easily. Um, translation, of course, uh, driving and so on. Some works that are more related to uh, dealing with people or maybe uh, uh, more very open-ended work, like like a, a firefighter maybe. Uh, he, he will one day need to take, to, to, to put out a fire, maybe another day uh, save a kitten in the tree. Uh, it's very hard to automatize these kind of works. And these are more like, these other two examples are more like human-to-human uh, -human interaction. So you want a human to be there because it's, uh, 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 there's an aff affective uh, aspect to it. Yeah. Um, talking about wealth distribution is very important because the people, the people that own these machines uh, are few people, are not most of the people. So as we automate things, uh, we tend to concentrate wealth into the hands of uh, fewer people. And um, one example I show here about, uh, I mean, this is not only about automation, also internet, yeah? 
Kodak is a very um, prominent example in the 90s. It had more than, at some point, 145,000 140, employees, yeah? And um, it stock a value of $30 billion. And uh, in 2012, Instagram uh, employed 13 people and was sold to Facebook for $1 billion. Now I heard uh, uh, some bank was estimating the value of Instagram into the $30 billion now. But it has now 12 people, I heard, so one less. <laughs> and uh, this you heard before. Uh, this was uh, in the other presentation by Autodesk CEO. Yeah. OK. But another point is, OK, uh, maybe it looks bad, but what if uh, we do not want the jobs in the first place? right? Because, well, these are boring jobs anyways. Who wants to drive for hours and hours? Who wants to do this you know, boring? tasks of researching documents for many, many hours, yeah? So uh, maybe we don't really want work. Then, then what? Then ca what can we do, yeah? Um, and then if we do, do not have work, then how can we spend money and then uh, keep this automatic <laughs> automation going on, yeah? Be because they have to sell the goods to someone, yeah? So one idea that comes uh, to mind many often, uh, very often, is this uh, universal, universal basic income, the UBI. Um, one thing uh, is that, that one important part is taxation on automation. Uh, just this year, in June, uh, actually in, in Germany, there was a proposal to the EU to consider robots as electronic persons so that they could pay social security and then help in the uh, jobs they displace, let's say. Uh, I'll not talk much about this, but anyway. Um, one important point uh, for Brazil, this doesn't look much good because we don't have uh, these companies in Brazil. Like I said before, uh, we, we have mostly branches. So how, how can we get these taxes? Yeah. Um, so the, the basic idea of the universal basic income is that everybody gets an income, no conditions applied. Um, it was first, first mentioned in this famous book. Uh, it, it basically defines the word utopia with the current meaning, this book. Uh, I have to hurry up now because my, my time is over. Um, uh, some people think about UBI also. It was first proposed not just because of uh, automation, but also as a way to simplify uh, uh, welfare systems. Instead of having you know, different uh, health caring systems and so on, you just give people money and they do whatever they want with this money. And uh, there was some other experience in Canada, Uganda, Kenya. There's a nice paper in Uganda about this. And some, what well, they vote in Switzerland, this is, is maybe you know, uh, it was 77% against. But in Canada, they will do an experiment in Ontario, in Finland, Netherlands. Um, these three will happen next year. Um, so they are taking seriously this. And then, then comes the question: uh, What to do? Uh, what to seek? Uh, how to seek purpose in a life without work? Yeah. And I know, I mean, many of you are very young, and you are used to study, <laughs> education, and this is, uh, is maybe for this kind of people like us, it's more easy for us to change uh, or seek different things. And but I show these hands are, are from an uh, uncle uh, of my wife. He passed away already, and he had a heart condition. Yeah. And he was a farmer the whole uh, life. So he has these um, hands with uh, very rough hands. And um, his identity was that of a farmer. He wanted to work all the time. And he had a heart condition. So he had this um, uh, cattle at one point, And uh, he actually died uh, running after the cattle uh, in the field. So he died being, um, I, I like to say, I mean, uh, it's like he was trying to be himself up to the end. So I, I saw. The father of my wife has a similar heart condition, and uh, their, their family were more strict, and they didn't allow him to get out, and it was very sad to see him lose his identity. So um, if you know older people, maybe you know people like this, that uh, how can you tell them, I mean, if there's a truck driver that will lose the job, uh, what, what can, can you tell to this person? Yeah. Okay, um, and then I come with one proposal that is this idea so with this one, uh, maybe, maybe it's a legend, I don't know whether it's true or not, about um, uh, Philippides. He came from the Battle of Marathon to tell in Athen uh, that the battle was uh, finished and they won, and he died there. And then he started this um, marathon thing. But now people run just, oh, sorry, 
wrong computer. <laughs> People run just for no reason, you know? Like uh, Usain Bolt, you, nobody looks down to him like, oh, this guy is a lazy guy. He's really fulfilling, I mean, he's trying to achieve something. It's self-fulfilling something. And uh, people look up to him, yeah? So maybe a, spo a sports career is something to think about. Uh, arts, um, here I have a little Easter egg. This painting was actually done by a robot. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and uh, academic career, we already have this. So, we, uh, and this was already suggested uh, by Martin Ford, who, who is a researcher on, he talks about UBI a lot that uh, maybe you could uh, couple, not just give um, uh, money for free for everybody, but just have a kind of merit system where people would uh, try to achieve more and more. Okay, let, I'll just finish. Uh, uh, in the short term, okay, uh, then the short term, what can we do, yeah? Education and training, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, foster innovation entrepreneurship, Focus on creative careers. These are less likely to t be taken by robots uh, very, very soon. And uh, uh, focus on more human-human relationships, yeah? And then uh, these are, uh, you can ask me about this because I don't have time. These are some robots. Uh, we are working on uh, a company where we are funding about education in robotics. And here the reference. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for a long time. <laughs>